Hey everyone, Xboxer here, and this is part four of the Tiger Claw EMI RFI testing. And I finally had a breakthrough, and I will show you the current setup, which has been very effective in com almost completely eliminating the uh, RF being generated by this inverter. As mentioned before, uh, and as shown in previous videos, I had a 16FC Corecom. Uh, filter, but I realized that that wasn't enough, so I decided to get uh, some ferrite toroids. Uh, it is type 31. I'll link to the uh, to the part number in the description down below. But what I've basically done is uh, taken the ground, the neutral, and the hot, wrapped it around four times, the three wires, wrapped them four times around each uh, toroid, and put them in series. So uh, basically I got or eight, 12, so 16 turns around type 31 uh, ferrite, which is perfect for around the AM frequencies. Ferrite specs say anywhere from uh, 1 megahertz to 300 megahertz, which um, when you look at the graph, it's actually, it starts to lose its effectiveness for uh, suppressing EMI at around 100 megahertz, but it still has a decent amount of uh, suppression, even up to 300 megahertz. If you want to, uh, more suppression up on the higher frequencies, you'll have to go to a different uh, type of uh, ferrite mix. Okay, as uh, in previous videos, same setup as before, and we are going to listen to just the batteries. And this is tuned to 1365 AM, uh, which is 1365 kilohertz. This is just on batteries, nothing is connected to the inverter. Okay, now I know this is still not the greatest way to ground it, but I'm going to ground it to the plug and listen to it again. Again, it's not connected. Pretty much no change. Okay, now we're going to plug the inverter first directly into the inverter. Directly connected to the inverter, same frequency, 1365 kilohertz. And that's pretty much all the way around the band. It's really bad at 520. Also wanted to mention really quickly is that this is for the conducted emissions I'm doing a test for. I should have mentioned that before. Uh, this is just the conducted emissions on the uh, lines at the moment. Now we're going to plug it into my new filter setup. Now conducted emissions through the filter. Much, much more reduced. Okay, so now it's plugged into the inverter directly and let's go to that local station at 1320. Sounds pretty clean. Finally, I wanted to mention that while the inverter is grounded, I did not have the negative terminal of the battery grounded this time, but if I did ground it, it would only make the... Actually, I'm going to show you without, uh, without that, I'm going to show you another frequency. Okay, connected to the inverter, and now we're going to look at AM522 kilohertz. It's about as low as this can go, maybe about maybe 517, but... 522 just for the hell of it because I seem to be getting some uh, feedback from there and that clicking sound is actually for my camera so you still hear the hash but now let's try something else I am now going to ground that negative terminal of the battery to the case which is also connected to the ground rod okay now that clicking noise uh, is from my camera phone here, but now with the negative terminal of the battery grounded, here's that same 522 kilohertz. Little, if any, hash. I think the, if you were to use the S scale, I think that's more like S1, maybe S2, when before, without any of the filtering, it was more like S8, S9. It was pretty strong. Uh, and you pretty much have all your AM channels back. And that's at 593. 
So, pretty much AM radio you can use again. Further testing off camera has revealed that uh, the filter is very effective uh, for most of the AM band. Uh, if I were not to uh, ground the negative terminal of the battery, uh, while the filter is still able to suppress a lot of the EMI, uh, say from 700 kilohertz all the way up to like 1600 kilohertz, uh, anything below 700 kilohertz and anything above, say, and it's ve and it's very minute at the at the frequencies above 1600 kilohertz. Um, it's still a huge, vast improvement, and it seems to be common mode noise because before I had one common mode and then wrapped the ground, the neutral, and the um, the line uh, on its own one wire uh, on its own separate toroid, and that's really more for differential noise. It seems that the EMI and the RF that's being radiated from this uh, inverter is uh, common mode, so that's why I I, I wound them as I did here, all three wires on each toroid, and then putting them in series actually increases the suppression at the frequencies that I was looking for. Um, now, if this was uh, put in a car, more likely than not, you'd probably mount this to the chassis, and then it would uh, it would bond the case to the battery anyway. And there's nothing wrong with that, although I notice that uh, the voltage tends to drop about 2 volts. Um, and again, I mentioned with the fans, but that uh, I don't see any maleffect from setting it up that way. As mentioned before, uh, I really wanted to figure out what was wrong with the uh with the inverter not necessarily what was wrong with the inverter but to find a way to suppress that emi and rf being radiated across the uh the ac lines there and 99 percent of the time if you're running some lights and maybe a microwave some a television or even a stereo for instance as long as you're not using the am band uh it's really doesn't you don't even really need this filtering this filtering i wanted to do for those ham shack guys out there if you're an if you're into amateur radio or um broadcasts anything like that and you're using a using an inverter setup or maybe you're using battery in a solar setup with an inverter um this is the way to get rid of that noise so you can actually go and broadcast um and use your radio like you would and not have the inter uh, inverter interfere with it. So I hope this helps uh, the ham shack users out there. Again, if there's any questions or anything that I had missed, uh, please feel free to message me. And again, this is a great little inverter. Works perfect for what I want to use it for. I've already uh, uh, taken it out on a trip already for uh, just a quick uh, over the weekend camping trip. Had a microwave and a few lights and... Hey, you wound up watching a movie on a 19-inch screen, um, LCD screen with a DVD player built in. Not a single problem at all, and I had plenty of power to spare. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.